I'm going to go over some of the popular science books which I've bought over the years. Now I haven't read through all of them so the ones I haven't read through I'll just simply show you what I have. But I will be reading them obviously at some point in time because they uh, did seem interesting at the time I bought them. Now the first one I've talked about here is the Roger Penrose and the Emperor's New Mind. I bought this back in 1992, I think I bought it. I've read through this probably a couple of, well, a couple of times now I've read through it. And I've also uh, used sections of it here and there for some of my online courses. Or I've based sections broadly on part of the book. The nice thing about this book is that it offers just the type of... Uh, maths or applied maths which I'm interested in. So there's a bit of computer science, a bit of pure mathematics and a bit of physics thrown in as well. And I would suggest that if you're, say for example, uh, maybe a, a first year in computer science and you want to understand some of the mathematics behind computer science and computers, then the first three or so chapters of this book are really, 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 really good. Uh, so that's one if I had be if I had to go into a desert island somewhere and I was only only allowed to take one uh, popular science book, then this would be the one I would take. Uh, let's see, we've got Science: A History by John Gribben. It was a while ago that I read that, uh, so it's covering uh, basically the the history of science. So. Um, I do remember when I read it, it was very readable and it was very easily read. Uh, so I, that's a, I, I did enjoy that one. I read this one not long ago, uh, Infinite Powers, the story of calculus, the language of the universe. Uh, again, if, if you're just starting out in calculus or say like a, a fifth year or sixth year or just just a pre-university, ready, ready to head off to university, then this would be an excellent book to cover uh, in calculus. Lots of excellent uh, graphics in it. Uh, let's see. Again, they're not in any order. Uh, the Man Who Changed Everything. So this is all about the work of James Clark Maxwell, who is one of my uh, scientific heroes. Let's see. Now here's one that... Lots of people have, um, and I've got it as well. And I think I actually got it because lots of people have it. Um, I haven't gone over it myself. Uh, I've picked out little sections and read it and thought, yeah, this is really interesting. But I simply haven't had the time to work through. And that's the problem, um, is finding the time to work through some of the popular science books that, that I have. Uh, but I will go through it at some point in time. And until then, I'm just going to be picking out little excerpts now and again. Uh, that I find interesting. But that's one for the future. Again, I can't hand out recommendations if I haven't actually read the book, but just to let you know, this is the kind of thing that I'm interested in. Yep. Uh, let's see, here's another one. Uh, the Folio book, um, History of Western Science. So this is uh, it's actually the same John Gribben. John Gribben. It's not the same book, but um, it's a, a book of a, a similar type. But my brother got me this book uh, for a Christmas present uh, many years ago. And I have worked through it, actually. And uh, it's another excellent book on a history of uh, Western science. So, and it's got a nice, obviously a nice feel about it. It's, just, it's nicely uh, presented. Not necessarily the kind of thing I would have bought myself, but it's a nice thing to receive as a present. Let's see what else we have. Um, Professor Stewart's Incredible Numbers. Uh, just lots of puzzles. Again, not a book I would have bought myself. Uh, I was given this as a um, Christmas present from one of the uh, pupils which who I was tutoring in higher mathematics, which was very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, so, and I've read through some of this, and it's got a lot of it's a lot of uh, mathematical problems for you to 
test yourself out each day. Uh, the our mathematical universe. Again, I've not read it, uh, so I can't tell you if I uh, if what I if I like it or not, or what it's like, how how good it is. Uh, they're not again, they're not book, book reviews. It's just what I, I happen to have in my shelf at the moment, and uh, I will at some point be able to start reading this. But it's up in my shelf; they're ready to go. I I didn't get it that that long ago, and it was a six months or so. Uh, this book here, not a popular science, but it's um. Uh, History of Western Philosophy by Bertrand Russell. I've worked through all of this, and uh, it's there's some of the parts that are quite heavy, but in general it's okay. It's a good read. It's a read that will actually uh, it will expand your main your brain, expand your um, your knowledge and your your breadth of your knowledge, and uh, put a lot of uh, a lot of science history into a, a much broader perspective uh, so that would be a, another book that I would recommend it's a bit of a heavier read but uh, if you're interested in Bertrand Russell's uh, take on a history of Western philosophy then uh, that's the book obviously you would buy isn't it uh, I picked this one up for nothing I can't remember where uh, about the golden ratio, uh, which is I found quite interesting. Uh, they've got a whole series of these books, but they're quite expensive. I noticed that I was going to buy some others, but uh, when I realised how much they were, I decided not to bother. Uh, but this is actually an excellent little book, and if you can manage to find uh, some of the the rest of the books of this series, then uh, for cheap, then I would suggest you you, you get them because they're, they're really quite good. Let's see, well, here we go again. Um, Roger Penrose, The Road to Reality. Again, I've read this cover to cover and I've gone in every so often and picked out little sections as well. And it's a fantastic book. Another one, I mean, th this one here, I would be vying for uh, either this one by Roger Penrose or the previous one, The Emperor's New Mind. Uh, by Roger Penrose, so uh, this is the uh, the follow up to to this book here. And if you were going to buy two popular science books, or if I was going to have two books that I could take to a, a desert island with me of popular science, then it would be these two books. Uh, this this book here actually it's got it's a bit more mathematically detailed, uh, which is good. The, the ultimate mathematical challenge. Again, I was given this as a present. It's uh, lots of little mathematical um, problems with the solutions that are with them. Um, I can't say that I spend an awful lot of time reading these little books with little, little lots of little problems in them. Um, I would prefer to spend my time actually working through a course or a, a set of course notes, but someone gave me that as a present and it's, it's that's what's sitting on my shelf uh, there's about half a dozen more here to go uh, the 10 most beautiful experiments again another folio book my brother uh, tends to like to buy me these uh, folio books uh, and again it was a good read I remember reading it a couple of years back and I did enjoy it another one here uh, the age of wonder so, how the Romantic Generation discovered the beauty and terror of science. Which again, is like another um, history of Western science sort of that book. Uh, so, again, another beautiful, fantastic book and a, a really interesting read. It covers an awful lot of the work, that, an awful lot of the, the history that you've seen in the previous um, Gribben books. Uh, Heavy side, so another one of my after um, after James Clark Maxwell, probably one of my other um, scientific heroes. Uh, heavy side, so heavy side took 
James Clark Maxwell's original equations and he modernised them into the now, the form that you see now, uh, that you're used to seeing uh, and you're taught in an electromagnetics course. So, fascinating guy. Um, strange, but fascinating. Oh, what's this one here? Bill Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything. It's not the kind of book I would normally have read through, but I found it really enjoyable, and I read through it cover to cover when it first came out. And actually, the, uh, the quality of the book is fantastic. The stories in the book are really well written, and it's just really well put together. Uh, definitely a, f a, nice, a good book to have on yourself, and a, a very interesting book to read. Let's see, we've got, oh, we've got two more here, so just two. We've got um, uh, Oppenheimer, so the life of uh, uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer. I found this quite interesting, not just interesting really because it was about him, because the people round about him were interesting as well, and it's got a lot of uh, stories of the people round about him. And it's a nice book as well because it does go in to details about you know his feelings as well as his um, achievements, which uh, was quite good. It's quite fair and quite balanced. Uh, but I went through that quite surprisingly quickly when I read it. Um, I thought it was a really really good read. And finally, this one here. This is another classic. I've read this cover to cover and I've read lots of the stories in it um, several times. So a world history of physics, astronomy and mathematics. So it really goes through details of the individual uh, physicists, astronomers, mathematicians, uh, names that you, uh, if you have in the, any physics or mathematics or, or astronomy, you'll, you'll know all of their names and lots of uh, stories about the individual characters and how they worked and how they found things out and the way they worked and just lots of different uh, individual stories about each of them. I actually swapped, I had a book on the finance of the London Stock Exchange, something like that. I had that book when I was a uh, second year student at uni and I swapped that book for this and I'm glad I did because this is just uh, so much better. <laughs> so that's the some of the popular science books that I have. I've got a few more sitting up there, uh, which I've not gone over. But that in general is the kind of thing that I'm interested in reading. Reading, And you can see there's probably, of those books, I probably went through maybe about uh, a half or two, two thirds of them. Uh, so there's about, you know, another half or a third, which I've still got to get through. Um, that's all. Now, uh, there are another set of books there, which I have on signal processing, which I've covered um, quite a bit of, which is really this, this part of my shelf here, if you can see it there, all the way along to there. And I bet you there's a few electrical engineers, you'll, you'll know what that one is. You may have seen that one. Yep. Um, so, and of course, I've got other books as well on uh, so, uh, my really computer science, which covers the bottom shelf here, which I'll go over at some other point in time. That's all for this video. I'm starting to uh, rumble on. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.